What's up guys? So you asked for it and you're going to get it. This video is going to be all about F-Body upgrades on a W-Body. As you can see, my brakes have been on here for over a year. They're looking pretty rough. Where I originally painted the calipers didn't hold up very well and uh, it's just kind of beat up. So I'm gonna be, first of all, trying to cure a few things in here today, but also I'm gonna show you guys how to do this and what all's involved there. But first, I've gotta get this apart so we can look at everything. This is really easy if you're getting ready to do this upgrade yourself. There are two 15 millimeter bolts on the back here that hold the caliper bridge to the spindle. So we're gonna take those out, pop this up and hang it for right now, and then we'll look at this and see what's going on. With all that off, you can see I also just changed this wheel bearing. I'm not gonna cover that in this video because I already did a video on that, but I will link that in the cards and down in the description if you wanna check that out. And the first thing that you'll notice now that this is off, this is your factory brake hose. One of the great things about this is your factory brake hose works just fine on these F body calipers. So that's something that you will not have to change, but do make sure that you use this, the bolt from the calipers. I'm not sure that they're the same from one to the other, so make sure that you use the one that comes with these calipers. The first thing that you might be wondering is why would I do this upgrade anyway? Why do I wanna do this over using just stock brakes? I'll show you a few things. This is a large part of it, is these calipers. First of all, they're considerably bigger than stock. They are also dual piston calipers, which spreads the load out more evenly and usually gives you a better pedal feel. But also, they are aluminum and they weigh nothing. These calipers, as big as they are, weigh less than the stock calipers do. The other reason is the rotor, which is about a full inch larger around than the factory rotor. Also, it's a pretty thick rotor, it's a good size. Now, during this particular repair, one thing that I do wanna do is change these rotors, the reason why. I used a less expensive performance brand of rotor when I did this upgrade initially on my car. These are Power Stop brand, and they have not been great. They are noisy, they were warped within the first trip, and they haven't done any better going forward. What I'm switching to are actually these Duralast Golds from AutoZone. A few things that I like about these, they're not fancy, they don't have cross drills and slots, and they're not shiny. They're actually coated black, which will scrub off of the pad surface area pretty much the first couple times you hit the brakes, but then it will leave this black coating on the rest of the rotor to keep it from rusting and looking bad later. And a few things that you can notice, look how thick and how beefy this part of this rotor is. Just picking it up, this is a heavier rotor than this is. And that's a very easy way to know whether a rotor is any good because the more meat it has, the more metal is actually in it, the more durable it's gonna be and the more it's gonna be able to withstand for those kinds of braking temperatures without warping and having any problems. So moving right along with this upgrade, the first thing you're gonna do, of course, is remove your old brakes, but then we're gonna need to put the rotor on. So what kind of mods do you need to run this rotor from a Camaro on your double W body? That's it, bolts right on. The two cars do not have exactly the same lug pattern, but they are five lug, and the lug holes in a Camaro are larger than even the lug studs in a Camaro because the friction between the wheel and the hub are what hold it on, not the actual studs and keep it centered. So they will fit just fine on a W body with zero modifications. There is, however, one place that you will need modification, and that is on this caliper bracket. Now, the spacing is the same for both cars, and the positioning of the two bolts is the same for both cars, which is great. Makes modification really simple. But the difference is the Camaros use a smaller diameter bolt. I don't remember the thread pitch right off and I don't remember what you're supposed to tap it to, but due to the genius of editing, I will add all that right here, right now. 
So, there's a couple different things you can do. ZZP and some other companies sell adapter kits, and what the adapter kits are basically are small spacers that go in the hole in the knuckle that shim it down to the smaller size and then new bolts, and then you can use the Camaro sized bolts in this on your W body. And that works with no modification. It makes it an easy bolt-on thing. The only thing I didn't like about that was the idea of having extra parts to deal with and spacers to keep centered. So if you have the equipment, there is another way. One, you can take this bracket to any machine shop and have them drill these holes out to the correct size and tap them for the factory bolts. Then you can use your factory W body bolts and it works just like stock. The other thing is if you have access to the equipment yourself, you can do this job yourself. One thing that I would recommend doing or having if you're gonna do this yourself is a drill press. The reason being, these need to be drilled very, very straight. If you drill or tap these crooked, you will wind up having a lot of problems trying to use them going forward. But if you have access to a drill press and if you can run to an any pretty much part store and get the correct tap for these, it's not a very difficult job just to drill these out, tap them, and then just run the W body bolts. And that is seriously the only modification that you have to do to run these on the car. Other than that, every single thing bolts up just like stock. What parts exactly are you going to need to do this upgrade? You can reuse your factory hoses, although now would be a good time to upgrade hoses if you were already planning to. You will need brake calipers for both sides. I got these off of a 2001 Camaro that was in a pull apart yard, which is the cheapest way to get them. But these are only about 35 or $40 a piece new from a parts store anyway. The only problem you're gonna run into is make sure that you know that they're probably not gonna take your W body calipers as cores for these. So you're probably gonna have to pay the core charge also if you go that way. But another route is run to a junkyard and get a couple of these really cheap from the junkyard. You can trade them in. Sometimes that comes out cheaper than paying the core. So that's a couple options there. But anyway, so if you go that route, you are going to need post facelift F body front calipers. You're going to need rotors to match, pads to match, and the caliper brackets. Reuse your hose. It all bolts up to the hub, no problem. I discussed the other modification. So the only other thing you're gonna have to be aware of is on the F body, this caliper sits back here on the back instead of on the front. On the W body cars, it sits up here in the front. Now, the only thing that that changes is what position this bleeder screw is in. And if you put these on the same side that they're on on the F bodies, you will not be able to bleed them because the bleeder screw will be pointed down, which means the air will be trapped over here and can't get out. So when you put them on the W body, you have to swap them left to right, which is no problem. The main thing to remember here, if you can't remember which one came off what side, look at the bleeder screw. As long as this bleeder screw points up, you're where you need to be. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to paint these calipers and clean this up and then uh, we'll see where we go from there. A little trick for doing these on the car. And the reason why I'm doing them on the car is because like I said, I'm not doing this upgrade right now. I'm just restoring it. So I don't want to break this loose because I don't want air getting into the system that I would then have to bleed back out. So I take the rotor box, hang it, from the rotor like this and hang the caliper here. This gives me a good place to clean this and let everything run off. And then once it's dry, repaint it. Now, when you go to do this, a lot of people ask me how long the paint on these lasts. This didn't last very good. And the main reason why is because I didn't prep it very well. So you're really deciding how long this lasts right now. The cleaner this is, the drier this is, before the paint is applied, the better it's gonna adhere and the longer it's gonna last. So the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna clean all this as best I can to get it as dry as possible. I'm going to put the bracket back on here and then I'm going to paint it. Then once that's dry, we'll do reassembly. So I've done some pretty substantial cleaning now and I've got the first good layer of caliper paint. 
But I've got to say, I'm pretty impressed with this VHT caliper paint that I'm using. Um, so I'm going to cut in a clip right now of this stuff spraying and how well that, that sprays, like what a good pattern it's got and how satisfying that is. Then, it's just going to be a matter of letting this dry the rest of the way, and uh, then we'll go ahead and reassemble. Okay, so, after the paint has dried all the way to the point that you can touch it and it not mess it up, I also then installed a set of Duralast Gold brake pads. I'm not really fond of the regular Duralast stuff, but the Duralast Gold pads I've had no problem with. And to be perfectly honest, I got them as a good deal with the rotors. So. Those are in. I also replaced this hold down hardware while I had it out. And the rotor, like I said, just sits on. And now that the bracket is modified, it just bolts in using the regular stock bolts. You're gonna torque those to spec. I'll try to put that up here. Actually, I won't. I went and looked. The spec, according to all data, is 137 foot-pounds, which is quite a bit I mean that's about what the axle nut tightens to so I was a little worried about that I chose to do 125 foot-pounds instead they tighten down to that with no problem so I'll leave that up to your discretion as far as that goes also it's a good idea to make sure that you lube all of the sliding pieces including the caliper pins with some sort of caliper specific grease this is what we use here so that's what I used to lube everything. And once these are tight, we're just gonna be putting the wheel back on. Then you've gotta take it out and break it in with a couple moderate stops followed by a couple medium to heavy stops. And then if everything is good, we are basically done. So that's pretty much it. There's nothing really left to do but put the wheel back on and tighten the lug nuts to 100 foot pounds. And then I've gotta go test drive it and break them in and everything should be straight. Hope that that answered all of your questions but if it didn't feel free to ask me in the comments and for those of you who did stay and make it through the entire video I'm gonna give you a little bonus here the one we've been working on this is the owner Matt's engine that he's been building a little bit of eye candy for you guys this is a 429 Super Cobra jet going in a 1970 Torino Cobra that's been a pretty fun one to see come together. So I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, make sure that you smash the like button and make sure that you subscribe to my channel. If you're new here, hit the bell icon and I will see you guys in the next ones. As usual, thank you so much for watching and peace.